it's Gabrielle, and this video is a sample from StudyClicks Boost, our new rapid revision tool. Go to studyclicks.ie forward slash boost to find out more. In this video, we're going to have a look at the structure and the function of the eye. Now, the first thing you'll see is that this is quite a complicated diagram. Now, I haven't seen it asked before where they've asked you to draw the eyeball, but you certainly should try it and you make sure that you can name all the parts and give the function of each part. Okay, let's start on the outside of the eye and you'll see that there are three layers going from the outside to the inside, the sclera, the choroid, and the retina. Okay, starting with the sclera, this is the white part of the eye. It's the outside layer, it's very tough, and it offers protection and helps shape the eye. The middle layer is the choroid, and what it does is it's darkened, which stops reflection of light within the eyeball. The retina is the innermost layer of the eye. Now, when an optician looks into your eye, this is what they're looking at. Now, the retina has lots and lots of light receptors which convert light to nerve impulses. There are two types of light receptors. There's the rods, which are good for dim light conditions and black and white vision. And there's the cones, which are good for bright light conditions and color vision. And if you want a little simple way of remembering which is which, think rods has a D in it. Dim has a D in it. That's the way I remember it. At the back of the eyeball, on the retina, there is a concentration of lots of cones. And this area is called the fovea because it has really strong, acute vision. It gives you the sharpest vision on the fovea. So when light is focused onto the fovea, you will see the sharpest image. The very front part of the eye is a transparent area known as the cornea. It's a transparent layer at the front of the sclera. It's slightly curved, which means it refracts light onto the lens and allows light to enter the eye. The conjunctiva is the outermost layer on the cornea, and it's a thin transparent lining that protects the cornea against infection. It also lubricates and moisturizes the eye. At the back part of the eye, there is the optic nerve. And the job of the optic nerve is to transmit the electrical impulses from the eye to the brain. Now, where the optic nerve leaves the eye, there won't be any retina. And this leads to what's called the blind spot. It's an area where there are no rods or cones and it doesn't pick up any light because the optic nerve is leaving the retina at that point. The lens is an area of transparent tissue toward the front of the eye. It can change shape in order to focus light onto the retina. The lens is held in place by suspensory ligaments. The ciliary muscles connect onto the suspensory ligament and they move in order to reshape the lens. And by reshaping the lens, we can focus light onto the retina. The iris is the colored part of your eye. So you'll have a green iris, a blue iris, or a brown iris. The job of the iris is it controls the amount of light entering the eyeball. So on a very bright day, your iris will be closed down, reducing the size of the hole or the pupil, which means small amounts of light is entering the eyeball. Whereas in a dark evening scenario, like in a forest, the iris will contract, letting more light into the eyeball giving you larger pupils. The pupil isn't really a structure. It's simply the hole through which the light enters the eyeball. Now, the eyeball is filled with a liquid. There are two areas where this liquid is present. A front area in front of the lens called the aqueous humor, and it gives shape to the front part of the eye. Behind the lens, there's the much larger vitreous humor, which is a liquid filled area of the middle part of the eye, and it gives shape and roundness to the eyeball. 